As I'm standing in a long, dark hallway where all around me fluorescent jagged lights and harlequin diamonds glow under black light, I can barely see through the fog filling the room between each strobe of light flashing me in my face. And I'm relishing this all in my buzz as up above me, sound effects and loud music crash in my ear. And then finally, from across the room, yet sounding like miles away, I hear it, the call. Fresh meat, fresh meat. The gates of hell have opened and it's showtime. It's Halloween night at the annual Haunted Trail in Balboa Park. It's a mile long journey of haunted themed mazes and trails where zombies and evil clowns pop out from dark corners of the room. This is my first year as a scare actor, and for the past six weeks, I can't remember the, any time, any job where I had more fun than this. And I took it for a few reasons. Uh, I need an extra income to help for my 11-year-old poor dog, Joey, who had bad teeth and needed pulling that were hurting him. <laughs> and I thought I could use the exercise, and I would have a story to tell. And the thought of working there reignited my interest in acting, which is something that I hadn't done since I worked for uh, Haunted San Diego as a tour guide 13 years ago in Old Town, where I wore a gothic Edwardian outfit and stood in front of haunted landmarks and told creepy stories. <laughs> and there's just something about getting into costume that uh, helped me take me out of myself from my awkward self and be someone else. And for years, I've always wanted to see what it was like working in one of these haunted houses, but not because I like to scare people, but because I was really interested in the reactions that I would get. So my online application qualified me to come into an audition where, as a group, we had to perform our best zombie walk and our best scary face and our most evil laugh. <laughs> And I was able to shed all inhibitions and get to my inner deeper self and give a great performance because I wanted this job more than anyone else in the room. And for my audition finale, I sneezed into my hand a handful of fake snot and then I proceeded to smear it all over my face as I bugged out my eyes and let out a chalkboard scratching screech. And I was told that that's what got me hired on the spot. Of course, even though I didn't tell the owners that it wasn't actual snot, but really, it was flavored lube. <laughs> and I was excited that this new venture was going to kind of disrupt my regularly ordinary schedule. And I was looking forward to my first day. So I show up with no idea what they're going to have me do. And then I checked in, and I waited until, you know, and I'm observing all these other people that have worked there before, and they're so much younger than me. And they're all in their little groups, and they all seem to be caught talking about the latest Netflix dark series or who the most dark superhero is. It was a common bond that kind of brought them all together on that same plateau as they are all getting into their makeup and their costume. And when I got into my costume and makeup, uh, that helped me physically transform into a scare clown. But uh, the butterflies that I was experiencing beforehand helped me transform internally as well. I went from being Dr. Jekyll at the Old Globe to <laughs> Mr. Hyde the Zombie at night. I was assigned to the front room uh, where in the, uh, the fun house, which was close to the entrance. And I stood in the back of a long, dark hallway. And my apprehensive victims would enter in the front. And I'd rush them from the back, dodging in between from all these hanging uh, punching bags, I would, you know, eat, jumping and laughing like an evil clown. And my victims clung on to each other, and they screamed, and they ran, and a few of them even ran out the emergency exit, which I <laughs> kind of felt bad about, but it only meant that I was doing a good job. And it was always busy. It was constantly one group after the other for up to five hours with just barely seconds in between. And it was, uh, for 61 years old, it was pretty physically demanding, but it was so much worth the fun. Uh, most people, they come through to have a good time, which I enjoy. They're laughing, and they're just uh, screaming and laughing. And then there's those that come through that decided that they're just already going to be assholes. They're going to get right up in our faces, and they're going to scream and yell and try to threaten to hit us because we knew we couldn't touch them. And then there were those that just 
came through just like, like they're just bothered by everything. Like, go away, you know? And it's like, and you wondered why they even spent their money in the first place. But then I realized that fear wears many masks. So working two jobs from morning till midnight soon began to wear on me physically and mentally. And by the third week, I was dragging my ass into both jobs. And uh, in the evening job, I would go in, do my makeup and, and the wardrobe. And then I'd go find a secluded spot where I could just relax and drink an energy drink, maybe eat a little edible, you know, just to dredge up that sincerity it takes to be an effective scare clown. But once they called fresh meat, oh, those butterflies came back and I felt just as excited as I did on the first night. But in the punching bag room, the scope of reactions that I could get was really only limited to what I could do. And I wanted to do something more. I, wanted, I just didn't want to scare people. I wanted to terrorize them when they least expected it. I wanted to make someone shit their pants. <laughs> then late wet night, the wardrobe and makeup trailer burned to the ground. Yeah, full of inventory. And while the fire was unfortunate, it was a turning point for me because when the call went out to the crew to contribute to our own costumes, I came up with one that uh, developed into a routine which turned out to be a hit. And it, I got a whole new energy for the rest of the thing. So nylon stockings pulled over faces always creep me out. So what do I do? <laughs> I, I make a bunch of nylon stockings. And I paint them, and I set giant ears on them, and eyes that would pop out of my head. Uh, and I was convincing as a disproportionately stuffed dummy clown. And then I was relocated into this new room, which had a refrigerator, and a corner closet that was built for the purpose of a scare actor to pop out from behind some curtains. But I thought that was just too predictable. Like I said, I wanted to take someone by surprise. So I took a shoe and I put it on the floor under the curtain to make it look like somebody was standing there. And then I found a way to prop myself up against the wall, right, just outside the closet, right? And I would hang there, look like I was permanently stapled to the wall. But while I was hanging there, and then I had an epiphany. I can make this space my own personal rage room. I found I could exercise revenge on all the people that have pissed me off over the years. I'd stand stiff and motionless in this uh, uncomfortable pose, waiting for the right time to pounce. And this person coming around the corner, oh, that looks like that unforgiving boss who always had my tail pinned between my legs. She comes up and she hesitates me. And then she just dismisses me and she sees that shoe under the ground. And right at that moment, I unpeel from the wall, get up behind her, I smash a can on the wall, bang! She turns around, her eyes widen up, her mouth drops, and she's going like this because she can't comprehend that this dummy that she thought was fake was real, and she collapsed to the floor. And her friends go screaming and running into the next room, leaving her abandoned on the loan. I said, yeah, boss lady, you had that coming for a long time. <laughs> and this next one coming down the hall, the one that looks like my only living relative, only living relative who stole my dad's entire inheritance, Oh, look at him with his group of friends, and he's the most macho guy in the group, which is the ones that I always go after. So I chase him, and he screams like a little girl, and then he hits the wall and actually tries to climb up and over this eight-foot wall. His friends are all laughing, giving me the thumbs up. That was fucking awesome! It was so liberating to be able to vent all those years of hostility and rage directly into the faces of real-life people who are paying me to do it. <laughs> And it was so fun. I mean, what can be psychologically and more uh, you know, uh, uh, satisfying than that? The only thing I had to do was just drop like a, dress up like a dummy. Now, memorable moments are the things that I saw and heard before I came to life off the wall. The drunk lady who sauntered up to me and started to grope me and tried to kiss me. The guy who mooned me, spread cheeks and all, and the look on his face when I said, so this is our first date? <laughs> and the things that come out of the mouths of 10-year-olds that would shock even a con team of construction workers at a strip club. And then I did hear actually someone say, oh my god, he made me pee my pants. <laughs> so five hours go by as fast as one. And before I know it, the last of our victims have come through, followed by the security guards waving their flashlights, going, this is a wrap. 
and the Torah shuts down for the year. So feeling cured, like after an exorcism, I walked to my car across the great big lawn with the cool Halloween air touching me and my arms and my face. The stress taken out on a thousand anonymous faces. I will appreciate the contrast of a quiet, peaceful midnight drive home through the park as the aches and pains begin to set in. I'm tired, but it's a good tired. I lost seven pounds the last six weeks, and I'm already looking forward to next Halloween. And had it not been for Joey, I might not have experienced this rage therapy. Soon, only the best of me will be walking in the front door to a happy beat of a tail thumping on the floor and a loving, toothless grin. <laughs>